I want you to look at this weapon. I want you to really look at this one. Study this one and come on a journey with me to explain why this weapon was just so important to Destiny. Probably the most hyped up weapon to be a part of Destiny 1 and the weapon that I think a lot of people have forgotten about in Destiny 2. I want to take you on a community journey filled with twists and turns, ups and downs, remasters, and of course, where we are today. I want you to meet a weapon that has blown away the Destiny community with sheer power and precision. The weapon that's hunt was nothing but mysterious, and the weapon that will need some major help to get back to those glory days again. Let's meet Sleeper Simulant. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music too. Being very upfront, hit the subscribe button, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day. Also, Atrax disc plates are very much still available. Link is in the description of those. This is the beginning of Destiny in 2014. A time for exotics to take over the game, become rare, and manifest as the ultimate chase in terms of rarity and playstyle. Weapons like the Galahorn, Icebreaker, Pocket Infinity, Patience in Time, and just a laundry list more were the epitome of Destiny 1's chase in the game. One common thing you may not have known about Destiny in Year 1 was that there was no exotic quests in Year 1. Yes, you could get lucky and have bounties drop an exotic bounty, which had a few more steps and one could argue these were quests themselves, but they aren't listed as such, so I won't count them. Basically, the only pursuits for these exotics in the game, the best loot possible, was to pray that an RNG or random number generator was on your side. The game was pretty bare bones, but I would argue that this is the charm that kept players around the game, never knowing what was truly out there. It wasn't until... that we would see exotic quests added to the game. On the date of August 10th, 2015, a Game Informer article titled The Sleeper Simulant is the Taking King's Biggest Mystery by Ben Reeves was released to the public. This article came after a large amount of in-depth talk about Destiny's Taken King expansion, the one that was to be released later into the year. Let's keep the focus on this article though. Sleeper Simulant as described by Bungie and the player base it as looks like a prototype, a test phase weapon using references from NASA. A NASA themed weapon with Ricochet being the key driving factor. Over penetrating targets, bouncing off of five different spots at a time, and a long focus laser beam that takes extra time to charge. Oh yeah. It was also Destiny's first ever linear fusion rifle, a heavy ammo fusion rifle with the acclaim of Destiny's fictional AI Rasputin's power. Game Informer even got to use the weapon with zero upgrades to it and fired it while being underleveled. The community went bananas for it, and it wasn't hard to see why. I mean, a laser cannon reminding the inner Halo fan of a Spartan laser with all the gravitas of Destiny's aesthetic to back it. It was oozing an aesthetic that looked futuristic yet familiar. Immediately after this video came out, you and I might have thought this was just another cool addition to Destiny, but we are not the subreddit Search for the Sleeper. This was a subreddit dedicated to what the name implies, Finding Sleeper Simulant. Like we said in the previous section, there were no exotic quests in Destiny to this point. So the excitement to what Destiny could bring to the table in terms of quests was really high. You also need to remember, the mystery of Destiny was still very rich. You just didn't know who, what, when, where, how, and why things happened in the game for sure, and now with Sleeper being announced as a quest, a new mystery was born. On the subreddit, the first hunt for the weapon was from user... Fart Sausage. Wait, one more time. Fart Sausage. Looked deep into the Manifest of Destiny and found that Bungie had listed a quest as a solo classified quest. This had mentions of the infamous Saber Strike, the Rasputin Bunker, and a mention of finding a piece of the puzzle. This post may have been on September 28th, 2015, but the hunt for Sleeper was only just beginning. 
On a date that I could not narrow down, four fusion rifles were completely random from killing enemies and found by the Destiny community. After some time turning those into Banshee 44, the gunsmith, the player base just kind of sat there and waited and waited and waited and waited until the day finally came for something that wasn't even related to Sleeper Simulant, the secret in a daily heroic mission, the reward, Black Spindle, the community's anticipation for the mystery of Sleeper Simulant reaching a boiling point. Jason Schreier, then of Kotaku, posted this article about the Sleeper Simulant, which went on to talk about the community's hunt for the mystery and how it would be another place he could see all that research actually paying off. Noting ACD feedback fences and pocket infinity as to where the community's minds were at. Schreier even goes on to give his best shot at a theory. Quote, I noticed that when you turn in the Devalin relics to the gunsmith, you don't push a button and cash them in. Instead, you have to hold the button for a long time as if the game is giving you a chance to reconsider your decision. This is a bizarre UI choice. Usually items that are designed to be deposited like the stuff you turn in at the Crypt Art for Glimmer will just disappear immediately when you hit the button prompt. Even Schreier was hooked to a conspiracy of the weapon. However, after some more time had passed and tinfoil hats were taken to an absurd level, on October 7th, part one of the quest was finally revealed. The first firewall which kind of has two meanings to it. Not only was this a mission in a giant AI's bunker, so that's the first firewall, I guess, but it also had a firewall to solve the puzzle as well. Oh yeah, you'll need those fusion rifles too, so I hope you got lucky ahead of time, or it was time to get back to the grind of it all. Anyways, once in the mission and down into the bunker, there was a panel to hit and four sets of Hive slash Taken Knights to spawn in a pretty particular order next to each other, and then after killing them, a giant knight spawned after all of them to kill. So after four waves, and the giant knight, the knight dropped a curious transceiver. Once examined, the mystery element of the quest was alive again. A player with a keen eye might have noticed the order the transceiver needed to be inputted. Did you figure this one out? Leave me a comment if you did. Well, it was actually dictated by the order the knights spawned in, with the Hive Knights being a positive and Taken Knights being a negative on the code. Once this was done four separate times and completed, a new mission was unlocked called the Shadow Call. Shadow Call was another spindle type of mission due to the timer, but I wouldn't call it anything like spindle in terms of difficulty or the requirements. While yes, there was a tight timer to it, you didn't need to kill any of the adds up until the final boss, and nothing was really shielded until then either. This mission did take place in Cade's stash mission, which was cool, and I appreciate the need to have bosses here as the three wizards weren't exactly super easy to kill. But once beaten, the player received an Ikelos Fusion Core for their efforts. Not Sleeper Simulant, but another piece of the puzzle. Once the core was acquired, you might have thought we were done. But you... Well, you see how much video is left. This required four missing pieces. The ionized shell harmonics, and if you pay really close attention, you can see what it wants you to do. The Ishtar Archives mission on Venus. Once picked up, not only did you receive completion for that part, the top right now needed a step as well. Legendary heavy couplings. So just dismantle a heavy weapon. Easy. And the bottom three were every Destiny player's nightmare. Defend the Warsat public events on the moon, Earth, and Mars. Why was this step very annoying though? Don't we have a timer in Destiny 2 that shows when and where public events are? Yes. Uh, yes we do. In Destiny 1, there was not, and it's for this quest reason that not only third-party public event websites were used, it's also why we have public events listed on a map in Destiny 2. Now that all of that was over with and the core was ready to go, you would think Sleeper Simulant would be waiting for you. But something Destiny 1 players weren't super familiar with was looming. Destiny 2 players know this all too well, but for the time, this was a relatively new concept. Time gating of quests. Yeah, 
Banshee44 wanted to take your core and show it off to the tower for a day. Until Arms Day. The next day. Or Wednesday. So, that's... that's something. Banshee then wanted you to go into a harder Saber Strike variant, which had almost no changes, and receive the... Sleeper Simulant! Frame. But then go back to Banshee and get the Sleeper Simulant, baby! What a wild ride of mystery for it to just kind of end. A weapon that had so much hype and mystery just ended. Schreier's theory was wrong. A lot of the community's theories were wrong. Some of them were partially right with the mystery, but ultimately the weapon was nothing but stunning. Hipfire Grip, Speed Reload, and Activate Ikelos, which over-penetrated enemies and bounced off of surfaces. That was really it for Sleeper in Destiny 1, though. You know, there was a few nerfs to it, a few challenges that it was used for, Day 1 Wrath of the Machine it was used for, and just the only fusion rifle in the heavy slot, giving it purpose and making it very special. An extremely meta and powerful weapon, which had the whole community foaming at the mouth to use. Now, that's cool and all, but how did it fare in Destiny 2? Warmind. A time in Destiny 2 that was... Uh, kind of under the radar and the first step to get Destiny 2 back on track. Well, the first time it needed to get back on track. But let's focus on one part of Warmind. The fact that Rasputin was back and that the exotic... Yes, the one in this video, Sleeper Simulant, was returning as well. Now, the steps to get the Sleeper in Destiny 2 weren't as cool, and the game already introduced Linear Fusion Rifle heavy weapons beforehand as legendaries, losing some of the charm to Sleeper in the process. But on May 10th of 2018, Sleeper was back. The quest was a lot less mysterious, though. Finish the campaign, kill some enemies, kill more powerful enemies, run some strikes with Ikelos weapons, open 15 sleeper nodes that came out with Warmind, basically public events and fetch quests. After all the jams that Rasputin is producing in these nodes, the community had to run Escalation Protocol with all these Ikelos weapons, and then run that Worm God strike. Finally, after all that busy work was done, Sleeper Simulant was back in Destiny, and this time, it came back with a vengeance. Look, before we judge this quest for being too much busy work and boring, yeah, I agree. But I think Sleeper came out at a time when Destiny 2 wasn't really looking to be inspired and was more looking to sell the idea of a season focus back on Rasputin and Mars. Marketing material? Oh, for sure. An amazing weapon coming back to fruition? Absolutely. So, that was the Sleeper Simulant and the journey that was in Destiny 2. Until... Well, that would be the end of Sleeper in Destiny 2, except for one core reason. Catalysts, community stories, and controversial nerfs. Let's start with what the hell a Catalyst is. A Catalyst was something new to Destiny 2 in the Curse of Osiris DLC, and later expanded upon in Warmind. Most of them do small bumps to weapons and add stats to weapons like stability and reload speed. But for Sleeper Simulant, the Catalyst was massive. Now, the RNG needed to get the Catalyst to drop was also absurd, only from Prestige Spire of Stars Raid, a raid that not only have we coined the hardest raid Destiny had ever made on repeated playthroughs, but Prestige Mode meant that your loadout had to be curated to what the raid needed. A very controversial change from the hard modes of Destiny 1. But either way, the Catalyst was in a chest somewhere in this raid at random. It may have taken the community anywhere from the first try till years later to get this thing to drop, but when it did, oh man, this was another grind to finish. 
The catalyst dropped, and that was just the start to finish it. This one required RNG on top of RNG on top of a grind. Remember that activity we mentioned previously? You know, the public event one? That's called Escalation Protocol. And Escalation Protocol had three weapons that were extremely rare. We're talking a 1% chance to drop. At the end of seven very difficult rounds of Escalation Protocol. Back then, to even beat this activity, you would need a full 9 to 12 people slaying out and working together with everything possible at your disposal in terms of loadouts and firepower. This to me, at release, 100% was the best public event activity Destiny has ever had. Even better than the Court of Oryx and Archon's Forge, but we'll save talking about EP in a separate video. For now, just know that getting the Ikelos Sniper, Shotgun, and SMG was very difficult and very time consuming, with an RNG Catalyst needing a thousand kills from each of these weapons. Well, by a thousand kills, I mean just put them in your loadout and shred with a different weapon in hand because it counted progress. But either way, you needed 3,000 kills to progress this Catalyst. The next step and later removed was to complete the Whisper Oracle puzzle till the end and it would progress the Catalyst. Then finally, after getting 3,000 kills and the Oracle puzzle, it was time to use the Sleeper itself. How many kills though with this heavy weapon? Just uh, 500 more with a heavy. Was it worth it? I think so. I'd say Sleeper had one of the best catalysts introduced because it took Sleeper's notoriously large charge time and cut it down, allowing for more DPS on enemies. It also gave Sleeper larger reserves of ammo, which is always a huge bonus when we're talking about heavy weapons especially. With the Masterwork, it charged almost 10% faster and allowed for 25% more DPS. Now, I may think that it was a really good catalyst and all, but Error went on to say this in his video talking about the weapon. Now, don't get me wrong, it definitely is something, but I don't think the two changes with this Masterwork are worth how much effort it takes to actually upgrade this thing. Not to mention, it still does not even come close to competing with other weapons in the power slot in PvE. With things like the EP shotgun that just completely destroy it in terms of damage per second, then things like Black Spindle, Whisper of the Worm that completely destroy it in terms of total damage output. I mean, the Sleeper really has no place in the game right now at all in PvE, unless you're just using it for fun or just to like change things up. It's not better than multiple other weapons in the power slot. The weapon didn't really find its home in Destiny 2 as much as it did in Destiny 1. Don't get me wrong, it still made short work of bosses, but I don't think it was as strong as people would have hoped it would be, especially in comparison to the EP Shotgun and the Whisper of the Worm Sniper. That day of power fantasy and reckoning would come for Sleeper in the most interesting way possible, however. Release with Destiny 2 Forsaken was a new mode to the game, Gambit. And with Gambit came Sleeper Simulant, crushing everyone who was unfortunate enough to get invaded on. Sleeper became THE Gambit meta and received its first Destiny 2 nerf as a result, making the weapon receive half the ammo per crate as it did before, and reducing its aim assist. Doesn't seem like a lot, especially given that the returning Queenbreaker's bow was way more of a threat, and to Destiny 2 players these days, Gambit is riddled with heavy weapons like Truth, Eyes of Tomorrow, Xenophage, the list really goes on. But yes, our good boy Sleeper Simulant was hit with its first of many large nerfs. The next major nerf, and the one that put Sleeper to sleep for good, was the nerf in the Season of Opulence, where Bungie nerfed the bounce damage and ricochet damage to boss combatants. A staple to the weapon's damage being even comparable to heavy weapons, but nerf for the upcoming season and fear that it would run the Menagerie and Crown of Sorrow raid bosses into the ground. Not only was that fear to me a huge miss on Bungie's behalf, but now a weapon that was already kicked down was just straight up murdered for all of us to bear witness to and hold the pieces of. I know this question is more rhetorical, but how are you feeling about the nerfs to Sleeper? Just drop me a comment for our boy. Pour one out for him. Sleeper may have been nerfed many times over, but the question always remained. 
What if there was a day it could shine again? How could that happen? Well, it took a very long time, but Sleeper Simulant, hold on with me, along with all other linear fusion rifles, pause, will be receiving a 15% damage buff in the Season of the Splicer on Destiny 2. All right, you can freak out now. Finally, Sleeper is back, right? Well, I hate to be that guy here because I want this thing to shine again, but I just don't think that will be the case. Sleeper may be receiving the buff, and since it's solar, it may be able to create war mine cells, but it doesn't have nearly the strength of even legendary linear fusion rifles, especially given that those can roll with Vorpal Weapon, making them even stronger. So while I'm excited for the buff to Sleeper, it's still going to need a lot of CPR to come back to life. But just like the nerf question, I want to ask you about the buff. Will it be enough for Sleeper? Let me know in the comments. Well guys, that is the story of Sleeper Simulant. A weapon I've been wanting to cover for a very long time, but just didn't know when it was appropriate. So if there was a time, I guess it's now. If you did enjoy this video though, a like is greatly appreciated as well as a subscription. You can watch all my videos and catch a stream at twitch.tv slash evanf1997 as I go live there all the freaking time and my chat is hilarious, as well as my second YouTube channel for some juicy highlights. Anyways, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I hope you enjoy the bloopers. Pour one out for our boy, Sleeper. Dude, if that dire promise has elemental capacitor, then we're all gonna get late tonight. <gasps> oh, Connie, it's happening! Oh my god, dude! Connie, Let's go! Oh. Yeah. Get it clean! Please yeah. have ricochet rounds or armor piercing or something like that. Go, 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 <gasps> go. Yes, you got it. Oh my god. Oh, I got. Look at this! Drifter, I'm a. Suck that d You took them, now hold them. Look at them fall. Outstanding. Phenomenal! Double down. Yes! Three down!